This is Alessandro Volta's voltaic pile, and it was the first battery ever documented that was able to sustain an electric current to a circuit. And this is a lemon battery, which you've almost certainly seen before and is probably the most cliche science fair experiment known to man. As it turns out, from a chemistry standpoint, these two things are almost identical. Lemon batteries use galvanized nails for the zinc and pennies for copper, but you can actually buy pre-cut strips of copper and zinc for this specific purpose, and I highly recommend that, link below this video. But why does putting copper and zinc into a lemon generate electricity? Well, electricity in essence is nothing more than the flow of electrons from one place to another. In the lemon battery, the zinc acts as the source of the electrons. You'll recall that zinc is element number 30, which means that it has 30 electrons, and of the four shells of electrons that the zinc atom has, it has two in the outermost shell. You'll recall that that's called the valence electrons. Now, when in the presence of an electrolyte, zinc will shed those two valence electrons, and they will go shooting up out of the zinc, through the circuit, back into the copper, and will find a happy home in the electrolyte. What was before just standard zinc atoms have now turned into zinc ions, which are positively charged because they lost the negatively charged electrons when they provided them to the circuit, and those negatively charged electrons return back to the positive ions in the electrolyte, and everything balances out, and all the atoms live happily ever after. Volta's pile followed this exact same principle, the key difference being that instead of a lemon as the electrolyte, he used sheets of cardboard that were soaked in brine or salt water as his electrolyte. On one side of the cardboard disc, he attached a zinc plate, and on the other side, a copper plate. The combination of these three elements, the zinc, the electrolyte, and the copper, form one of what I like to call a voltaic sandwich, and it's effectively a single cell battery. In my own setup and experiments, I found that one voltaic sandwich could give approximately 0.7 to 0.9 volts, and under load it could sustain about a half a milliamp. Initially, I created this small enclosure with springs to help keep everything in the voltaic pile all nice, close together, and centered. However, I ended up actually abandoning this idea because it kind of crunched everything together. And I found that what was happening was the tissues would kind of spill over the edge of the metals when they were wet, and you'd get contact between cells. And this would lower the voltage because there was essentially a short between different cells of the battery. I found that in my spring-loaded voltaic pile, I was only getting about 2 to 3 volts, but with 10 cells all getting 0.7 to 0.9 each, I should have expected 7 to 9 volts. So the springs were kind of cool, but they were just a headache to deal with, and I ended up abandoning them in favor of this gravity-fed version. All of these files will be available for free on my Thingiverse, and you can find the link in the description of this video. I found that changing the folded up tissue wads out in favor of laser cut cardboard not only was more in line with Volta's original design, but it also mostly alleviated my shorting issues. With the revised setup, I was able to get a peak of about 7 volts, which was much closer to what I originally anticipated. I ended up finding out that the voltage was heavily dependent on how I held the pile. I found out that if I squeezed everything too close together, I would still have the shorting issues that I originally had, and if I didn't squeeze things tightly enough, there wouldn't be the proper contact needed between different components of each sandwich and each cell. So I had to find this happy medium where I was putting just the right amount of pressure, and when I did that, I could get 7 volts sustained. I almost went back and started redesigning the whole thing, but what I eventually decided is that this is more of a demonstration and a teaching tool than anything else, and it's not made for anything practical. So in my personal voltaic pile that I made, I ended up actually just ripping the legs off of these things and just using them as little pads with connectors. And on the end here, I crimped this little DuPont terminal, uh, which just made everything a little bit easier to work with that let me plug it into a breadboard. This is obviously not necessary to make the connector, but it just makes everything a little bit easier to plug into a breadboard and probe with a multimeter and such. For educators, I wrote a full-length Instructables article, which you will find in the description of this video. It's complete with a whole lot of pictures, it's written in simple terms. I think this would make a great school project, and by following my guide, you can do so really easily. In that Instructable, I also have an SVG file, which provides a guide for laser cutters if you are inclined to that. When I was nearing the end of my work on the voltaic pile, it kind of got me thinking about why we use lemons for the electrolyte. Zinc and copper, I understand, they're household metals, you know, you can probably find them, they're very cheap, but why a lemon? So I started looking into what electrolytes you could use alternatively, and it turns out you can use salt water, which is what I did, you can use brine, you can use vinegar, you know, there's even chemicals that you can get, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, but I started thinking about it, and if all you need is an electrolyte, well, there's electrolytes in just about every food that we eat. So it prompted me to start looking around my kitchen and seeing what other foods I could put zinc and copper into and probe with a multimeter to see what voltage I could get. And that prompted me to make this little short video. And if you already follow me on TikTok, you've seen this, but I'll go ahead and include it here because I thought it was hilarious. Testing lemon battery alternatives, but it keeps getting worse. Grape, 0.95 volts. Pink lemonade, 0 0.93, 0 0.94 volts. One Roma tomato. 0.9 volts. 
Diet Coke, 0.97 volts. No way. <laughs> Wait, can you make a battery with just anything? Honey ham, 0.77 volts. No. <laughs> Cheese, 0.71 volts. Queso, 0.63 volts. My own tongue. 0.7 volt. Custard soft cake. 0.71 volts. Oh. Point. Yeah, 0.71. In the full stack voltaic pile, as I called it, with all 10 cells, I was able to get a peak of 7 volts and a peak current of around a little over a half a milliamp, which surprisingly was enough to power one of these little tiny 3 millimeter LEDs. It was really cool to see this completely closed system generating electricity from chemical reaction happening right before my eyes. But perhaps the most astounding thing was when I took the two terminals from the voltaic pile and I touched them to my tongue and I found that I could feel the electricity on my tongue just as if it were a nine volt battery made from the factory. It was crazy how much I could feel the electricity on my tongue. And it's like, in principle, yeah, I get it. It's electricity on my tongue, like I feel it. But it's just crazy to have that happen from a chemical reaction and even more so one that I set up and one that I made. It's a very fulfilling feeling, even if it's nothing groundbreaking. Or rather, I should say that just the whole project is fulfilling, not specifically the part of touching it to my tongue. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about electricity, the chemistry behind the lemon battery, and the voltaic pile. A huge thank you for everybody that supports me on Patreon, and the couple of people that have already checked out my brand new shop, shop.christophersfactory.com. Thank you again for watching Christopher's Factory, and I hope you have a wonderful day.